Even the most generous of Lewis Hamilton's admirers must admit that Formula 1 would be a bit more interesting if he could ease up on the winning a little after matching Michael Schumacher's record of 91 victories. But in the shadow of that enormous achievement at the Eiffel Grand Prix and a win that moved Mercedes ever closer to a seventh straight title double, we had an ominous warning that this really might not stop anytime soon. Don't go reaching for the thumbs down just yet, hopefully we can win you back before the videos end and give you a reason to hit like and subscribe instead. Hamilton's Schumacher equally win was a worthy headline grabber at the Nürburgring, but here's what we learned over the weekend that should leave the likes of Red Bull and Max Verstappen concerned for the long term as well. Mercedes has steamrolled this season. The only race it's been challenged was when a perfect storm made Verstappen and Red Bull unbeatable in the second Silverstone Grand Prix. But there has been a better run from Red Bull of late, with Verstappen getting ever closer to Mercedes since Italy. At the Nürburgring, he even held provisional pole after the first runs in Q3 and threatened to end Mercedes' pole position monopoly. But he was beaten by Bottas and Hamilton by two tenths of a second on the second runs. Nonetheless, Red Bull does seem to be building momentum and Mercedes boss Toto Wolff acknowledged after qualifying that the pattern of Red Bull catching up at the end of the season does exist, before hinting that this might be because Mercedes' attention goes elsewhere. Wolff said that the team was deploying the strategy we believe is right, that some of that was being seen with on-track performance and that Mercedes has to accept it will face more competition over the final few races of 2020. We'll get to Red Bull's role in that shortly, but for now we have a plaster to tear off. Mercedes is being caught because it's stopped developing its 2020 car a while back and its focus has been on 2021. F1 is keeping fundamental car components the same for 2021 but aerodynamic development is free and there are significant rule changes at the rear of the floor that will reduce the downforce produced by the cars. Any work that can be started early to master this should be very beneficial and there will be a knock-on effect as well because of the budget cap and tighter aerodynamic development restrictions being enforced in 2021. If Mercedes has its 2021 development locked down by the end of this year, then it can maximise how much of its time and money is spent next year on the all-new car rules for 2022, because work on 2022 can't start until next year. You see where we're going with this. Unfortunately, for those hoping Mercedes' run will soon come to an end, it seems the team's actually setting itself up to get the most out of next year and beyond. According to Wolf, Mercedes 2020 updates were finished a long time ago. He said that it's not every year a team's able to close the book early, but with a commanding start to the season, Mercedes has been able to redeploy its efforts on important work for 2021. So yes, Mercedes is being outdeveloped by Red Bull, but it can let that happen without worrying about 2020 being derailed, and it's all part of an ominous bigger picture. An unseen upgrade package helped make Verstappen and Red Bull a serious challenger to Mercedes in qualifying at the Nürburgring and continued a good run of form chipping away at their deficit. Earlier in the year, Verstappen and teammate Alex Albon had a problem with the car's sensitivity, making it unstable at the rear, causing oversteer and occasional spins. Those characteristics have been gradually muted of late. Visibly, the RB16 looks much the same as it did in Russia two weeks ago. Its upgrades are subtle with a couple of minor new appendages not reflecting the usual aerodynamic focuses like the rear of the floor or the barge boards. Red Bull was careful not to reveal what the package entailed but out of sight areas like the rear suspension and underside of the car are expected to be where improvements have been made. And they seem to have worked. Verstappen said he had understeer for once in qualifying and the rear seems to have really settled down. At its peak, the RB16 looks ever more capable of matching the Mercedes W11. The problem is it still has a much narrower window in which to operate at that peak. Other factors include the Nürburgring being less power sensitive than recent tracks, which may play a part as well. Engine partner Honda has had a season long deficit to Mercedes with a particular loss of performance at the end of long straights, potentially due to the Mercedes engine sustaining a higher level of electrical power deployment. And it's probably true that the engine mode technical directive stripping manufacturers of their highest power modes has brought Mercedes a little closer as well. But Verstappen's adamant the car is improving. He said that the team's development focus has been in calming everything down a bit and connecting the rear with the front a bit more. That, he said, seems to have worked this weekend. We know that at the start of the year a few things were not right. We tried to address it, we tried to learn, and we tried to make it better and see what we can improve, also for next year so that we don't make the same mistakes. That final point is the key. This is not the first time in recent seasons that Red Bull struggled early on, made significant gains once it's understood its initial deficits, and ended the year challenging Mercedes and making promises of a proper title bid next time. 
Those false dawns, or maybe we should call them false dusks given they come at the end rather than the beginning, are immensely frustrating. Unless, of course, you're Mercedes. In which case, the pattern of Red Bull catching up when it's too late and not doing enough next time out is absolutely fine. So an increased Verstappen challenge over the remainder of 2020 might just be a short-term injection of entertainment before the status quo resumes at the start of 2021. Hamilton's victory and Valtteri Bottas's engine failure means he's 69 points clear at the top of the championship and on course for his sixth title in eight seasons with Mercedes. It will be the seventh championship win of Hamilton's career and bring him level with Schumacher in that department as well. Given this feels like a formality already, the interesting question is whether Hamilton can reach title number eight and make that record his own. There's no sign of team or driver slowing down. Hamilton's now won 70 races for Mercedes since joining from McLaren in 2013, and he's been in relentless form since Mercedes became F1's class-leading team when new engine rules came in for 2014. In light of claims that he's only winning because of these rules and this team, it's important to recognise that Hamilton does play a key role in that. He's regularly pinpointed by the likes of Wolf, technical director James Allison, and ex-engine chief Andy Cow as being a driving force in motivation and development direction. Hamilton sees himself as the team's rudder, a similar role to the one Schumacher played at Ferrari, just with the drivers arriving at different phases of the team's preparation and therefore having different areas to focus on. Wolf described the modern-day Hamilton as nothing like the driver who joined in 2013 and said it's not fair that Hamilton's achievements get played down just because of Mercedes' car advantage. He also thinks that drivers who say Hamilton has it easy should analyse why they haven't found their way into a Mercedes. Hamilton's fellow podium finishers at the Nürburgring, Max Verstappen and Daniel Ricciardo were also happy to underline the magnitude of Hamilton's achievements and why it's not as routine as some might think. Max called it incredible, very impressive and that everyone thought Schumacher's record would be impossible to beat. Ricciardo pointed out that 91 wins is nearly five full years of races and said that any leading driver is aware of how hard it's been for Hamilton to sustain that level of performance required to rack up the numbers he has. With a driver still at the peak of his powers and the team seemingly well placed for next season and the ones that follow, is there any reason to think these records will finally make Mercedes and Hamilton drop the ball? Well, Wolf doubts it. He said of Hamilton's record, it's something to be proud of, but not something that should trigger too much complacency. That risk doesn't exist within our team because we're relentless, we push for perfection and for tomorrow, rather than looking back. Let us know what you think of that warning shot in the comments below and give us your verdict on Hamilton matching Schumacher while you're at it. Think about a thumbs up if you like this video, even if you don't like the prospect of more Hamilton wins, and subscribe to the race if you haven't already so that when the Hamilton Mercedes era does finally come crumbling down, you know exactly where to come to find out why.